Howdy, Jason Lewis here, and today in the Auto Edit Garage, I'm gonna give you a little bit of ketchup. Not the stuff you put on your french fries, but a ketchup on what I've done on the Mustang over the last couple of months, the few minutes I've had to actually work on it and didn't shoot video on. And I'm also gonna experiment with these shorter turnaround videos. When I'm not doing a big install on something, I'll just kind of do a quicker hit video so that way I don't do these long gaps between videos. Work's been very busy lately. It's a blessing. I've been shooting a lot on Roadkill. I've been shooting a new show with Fryburger called Roadkill Garage, which is on the Motor Trend YouTube channel. So check that out if you feel like it. It's just like guys in the garage working on uh, kind of like uh, what we would, uh, projects that we would identify with, you know, like on the Roadkill cars. Um, so first off, on the Mustang today, I'm actually gonna do a quick breakdown on brake line plumbing. I just started the rear on in this thing. Come on over to the workbench and I'll show you some tips and tricks on I use and things that I've learned over the years to get started on that. So the first couple things you need to think about when you're doing your brake lines are what kind of line you're gonna use and what kind of fittings you're gonna use on the end of those lines. Now, the easy way to go is to use this mild steel tubing. Uh, most older American cars actually came with this from the factory with this inverted flare on there. It's very easy to do. It's a reliable mating surface and uh, I like it. I recommend going this way for most projects or if you're going to do a repair, that's what you're going to be set up for. It takes a 45 degree flaring tool that you could do a double or inverted flare with and that's this tool right here. Now, another way to go is with this stainless steel line right here. Now this stuff is really tricky to work with because it's very rigid but it looks good and because it's stainless it doesn't rust and it lasts a long time. Now on the stainless steel line you would use a 37 degree single flare. Now that's a specific tool. It's not the same as your 45 degree double flare tool here and you would use an AN fitting on that. Now since over the years I've accumulated quite a bit of little random parts, I just kind of gathered everything together, threw them in these couple of boxes here, and I think I'm gonna have enough to do the entire Mustang with this stainless steel, this one coil of stainless steel here, and some of the fittings I have, I think I'll be able to do the whole Mustang out of this stuff. Now, if, I, you know, if this is gonna be your first time doing brake lines for a car, don't go stainless steel and AN. I recommend using the mild steel with an inverted flare. They're just so much easier. So now I'll show you a comparison between the two flares. This one being the mild steel with a 45 degree inverted flare. Now I'll put a 37 degree single flare on this little section of stainless steel tubing and I'll show you side by side comparison. Now let's do a quick flare. We'll use the 37 degree tool here and get this done. All right, so however you cut it, whether it be with a uh, a cutter like this or a wheel or a hacksaw. The trick is, is to just get the end of the tubing looking really dialed in and ready for a good flare. So that it means taking a little bit of a file to the end of it. I'll file it. Basically, you want the end of your tube to look like that. That gives you a good starting point. Then from there, let's flare this thing. So you get your tool, jab it in the tool there, tighten it down, give it about of a, te a tenth of an inch sticking out there. That'll give you plenty of room to flare. Tighten your tool down, then I warm up the tubing just a little bit. When I'm working with the stainless steel, <clears throat> I just find that just giving it a little bit of, of warmth helps it bend a little easier before it splits. Because if you flare it too much, the stainless steel will split right on its seam. And that's a bummer, you don't want that, that's leaky. You want it solid. So then you just get your flaring tool in place and you just gently tighten it down. Now I know there's all kinds of pneumatic awesome tools out there now that do this for you, but I just haven't bought any of that stuff yet. I just do it this way still. And you get yourself a good flare. It's 
get it out of the tool. Now this gives you an idea. This is what the AN fitting goes to, and this shows you how those would join together. So if you don't make enough of a flare, it won't fit all the way down there, but as you can see, both the mating surfaces are going in there all the way. Now what happens on a single flare is that you use this shoulder and a collar like this, that'll hold it in place. So this would all go into place like this, and that is how that seals. That's a good fitting right there. So that's how I do the single flares. So let me take you underneath the Mustang and show you how I did the rear axle. So there will be a hard line coming from the master cylinder to this little bulkhead right here. Then you have the flex line that will attach to the tubing, which gives the axle room to move up and down. And then from the flex line that goes from the chassis, you go to this T. I welded a little bung there onto the axle. And then from this T, you can go out to either caliper. Now on this particular application, these awesome Willwood brakes were a drum brake conversion. So you could just get, this was just an eighth inch NPT fitting to a 45 degree el elbow and AN-3 AN fitting. And then you just route your flex line here in a way that's not gonna bind up with any of your suspension pieces. And then on across. Over to this side, I made one more fitting and then flex line to the caliper. I'll make more videos as the brake plumbing progresses, but as you can see, it's pretty simple. Just pay attention because the brakes are very important. Now, let's get inside the car. So, as you can see, my office or my driving compartment in here is coming along very nicely. Got the Flaming River tilt column and wheel in here and that's just kind of affording me the final dial-ins that feel awesome. Um, another big thing for me was to hang the Willwood brake and clutch pedal onto the firewall there. Now that's not a mandatory thing to convert your car from an automatic like I was doing in this thing, but are you seeing that thing? Why would you not want that in your car? Yes, it was a little bit extra work, but Willwood makes this part right here, I'll put that part number in the description for you, that makes that install way easier than you would think. Now, this is definitely not show quality, but I got it done in, a, in an afternoon. I'll show you when we go into the engine compartment side how I did that. But basically what it affords you is the ability to have these gorgeous pedals here that have all of this fine tuning and adjustment. So when I want to do all that fancy footwork, doing the things that I want to be doing with this in the future, it's there. And besides that, I just love seeing that down there. I mean, it's just a gorgeous unit and super racy. And uh, it's what hot rodding is all about. It's just making, putting the stuff around you that you want to grab a hold of and, and do all your fancy footwork with. It's just going to bring me some joy. And that's what the whole point of this thing is. And it's going to be fun as heck. Now, I was working on Hot Rod Garage last week, and Tony Angelo was actually giving me the hookup. Instead of going with a stock gas pedal down there, he showed me some, some of the stuff that they use in their drift cars, like these uh, NASCAR-style pedals. And so I went to a couple different websites that he recommended, and I found some cool stuff. So I'm going to order one of those up, and we'll throw those in, and I'll show you how that ends up turning out. But... Yeah, so far this is awesome. Now the install of these pedals isn't finished. I just have it mounted to the firewall and the big trick here was to get them located to where you, where you want them. Now when we go to the outside into the engine bay compartment, I show you the master cylinders. I'll show you exactly what I did to make that fit. That made that much easier than you'd think. It was about an afternoon's worth of work. Let's go check that out. So here's the basic rundown of how I got the Willwood pedal assembly mounted in this car. I went ahead and removed all of the under structure inside there that held the old brake pedal assembly underneath the dash and the steering wheel support. So I have to go ahead and make more support. Now, if this were gonna be a race car and get a full roll cage, you would mount, tie all of that stuff in there. But since this is more of a street car that's gonna see some track duty, it'll get a basic roll cage, but not a full tube chassis, you know, full tube cage. So what I'll do later, and I'll show a video on that, is I'll build the structure that's gonna support the pedal. Cause right now, just this piece of metal is holding it in. Now how I made that piece of metal is really simple. 
I went ahead and found the location around the firewall that gave me the smoothest ability to splice in another sheet of 080 sheet metal into there. So what I did was made a nice neat cut around this. Now of course on these 73 Mustangs, I noticed on a lot of other cars there was lots of flat firewall to splice this into. Not on the 73. Look at all of that. There's just concaves and shapes everywhere. It was kind of a pain. So I just went to the area I found the neatest cut use this thing as a rough template to cut this piece of metal. Then it, once I got that in place and just weld it into place here, now remember this is not a show car, this is just a guy in his garage building a car. It looks fine, but yes, I get it. It could have been spliced in a thousand percent better, but hey, you know, it's done. Now, what I did was just measure where I wanted the pedals to end up in the car, and then this little billet piece right here was the key to being able to, instead of mounting each cylinder, master cylinder in there uh, independently, you just mount this trick piece right here to the firewall and then everything bolts to that. And so it's just, it helped the, the install quite a bit. So next up is to finish out the support mechanism inside there, but look at that. That thing is pretty awesome and it's gonna be a beautiful and really highly tunable set up once it's done. So now let's go downstairs and let me show you some exciting stuff down there. That is the Total Control Products rack and pinion unit for the early Mustangs and it's mocked up into place getting the final location dialed for ideal steering geometry. Don't worry that install will get a full feature video in the future but it's looking very very good in the car. I don't think I've mentioned enough yet how much I love these ET mags. Holy macro, those wheels are awesome. All right, so there's the basic catch up and rundown on the Mustang. I'm chipping away at it, and I appreciate the fact that a few of my YouTube friends uh, actually made some gentle reminders of getting these videos done. So I'll try to do them a little quicker like this and keep chipping away at the little things that need to get done, and we'll keep moving forward. So until next time, enjoy your drive. Yeah, definitely love these wheels.